So here is the tube, um, quite a long piece that um, should go as the column. Uh, first I hoped that I could have had it longer, but uh, as events turned out, my lathe didn't manage with that. Uh, but at least the height should be higher than what uh, is uh, shown here on the original uh, head mount and the 10, uh, 10 centimeter travel uh, I think I should be able to extend that to 20 or 25 uh, but I will have to cut this piece then to length to suit in my lathe and at first I was thinking about uh, having a, a block mount like this like a solid piece of uh, thick ball tubing that I put this into and this is uh, now later than uh, well, I went for the square tubing instead and then showing here also then the possibility of having a kind of support at the top of the column when it is mounted for um, better rigidity. Another consideration was the lathe uh, capacity really. Um, as it turned out I could not use the lathe steady to support uh, the piece here being 80 millimeter in diameter, uh, I found that uh, my steady didn't manage this to actually has a bore a little bit less than 80 millimeters. So I had to think about something else. So I reverted to having a kind of a bell center or at least a piece inserted into the inside of the tube at the end there to support it through the tailstock and then run it normally from, from the headstock end. And although not exactly as planned, uh, things uh, went okay really. Not the best finish <laughs> I've seen, but the dimension of it is correct. So uh, a little bit in excess, so I uh, I filed and um, and uh, sanded a little bit on top there. Just getting it out of the between the four draw and the tailstock end there. <coughs> and the uh, piece, as you can see, was turned, so to speak, between centers or between uh, the tailstock end there with the inserted piece. Oops, yeah, and there you can see the inside. Uh, where there is a cast bolt in the middle with epoxy granite inside and a tube. I did not have any 80 millimeter bolt, so therefore I had to revert to some alternative ways. And also this was rather alternative because I really would want to have used this, uh, the steady, but as I said, only eight or 75 millimeter capacity, so um, uh, this was a no-go. Um, but in the end it turned out okay with that and then the foot there also then leaving a little bit uh, because of well, late incapacity so um, this uh, will go down in the square column anyway so it doesn't matter and just you know thinking a little bit out of the box this uh, whole affair if I done it again I would have done it differently I have here the two bridge pieces, the plates uh, for the milling head for the AT300. I'm uh, wanting to just show how to use the Shoblin mill the versatile milling head here for this purpose of milling the sides and the top in one, uh, let's say, a setup. And also here then showing that it's very practical to have a head that can be set at an angle and then use the long axis for producing, for example, a uh, dovetail. In this case, I'm setting the head like uh, shown and then um, can mill the top surface. And just wanting to take the head a little bit further in. This is very uh, practical also. And I can also then rotate the head around 
so that I can access the workpiece from several dif different, uh, say, directions and, and angles here. So in this case, I'm milling the sides and top in the same go. And the weight of the well machine uh, table uh, allows uh, milling in both directions here. I mean, both up and down, really. So um, you can easily then uh, go just up on one side and down on the other side. So I won't show all, but at least this was a convenient way to to use um, the miller. And the clamp here on top, uh, I know that's not the way to use that clamp, but it was uh, was useful still in that way. So, 